You're listening to the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Show. We're going to keep you up to date and current in all sports. We'll make sure you're aware of everything in corporate and enterprise business. And most of all, we'll share with you how to make a little more money as we cover the NBA, the NFL, and Major League Baseball. This is just as easy as it goes when you talk about Caden Clark. Caden Clark can't beat Caden Clark, right? Understand what I'm saying. Because if I say a statement like that, you're going to say, Mike, what are you talking about? Caitlin Clark can't beat Caitlin Clark, right? So when you get in the grassroots training and development players, what do you think everybody's training every player to be right now? Caitlin Clark. Pretty soon, in another two, three years, Caitlin Clark's going to be facing Caitlin Clark, right? So that, that, that's, a, that's an inevitable, inevitable position to be in, right? So you got to accept that. Kelly was the one who built great Beaver teams. Bird, Donnie Walsh, Kelly is a very smart executive. Yeah, nobody's saying that. She was an assistant. On that team, she, Stephanie White, talked about Kelsey Mitchell by talking about the bug three, right? She had to do do that the way with her because she's a free agent. All right, so, okay. So at the press conference, you had to read the talks about the big three she was talking about. Clark, Boston, and Mitchell. She also has talked to Mitchell on the phone. The reason she doesn't play as up pace was she didn't have these players, right? Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Don't do that to me. You're telling me the Connecticut Sun cannot get up and down the floor. Did you see Bonner guard Caitlin Clark? That's a need for speed. Here's the deal. You could have taken a different system, right? And here's the argument, because I, I bring in the sky, because it doesn't matter to me. And, and it's not racism. It's called rot- being radical, right? So the Indiana Fever fans are radical. Right. But I'm an Indiana fever. I'm just not that radical. Right. So you, you got to understand this. Right. So when you when, when you talk to Mitchell on the phone, this is what you did. You, you, you literally have told me that the Connecticut Sun have less players than the Indiana fever have today. The Connecticut Sun are better. Right. They are better than the Indiana fever. Hands down. Right. The difference would have come through coaching. Right. That's why I talk about Becky Hammond. Right. Because the Becky Hammond had the Indiana fever, then you can talk to me and tell me, okay, Stephanie White, what you're going to do? Because Becky Hammond's going to reorg your whole system, right? And she's going to teach it a whole different way. So this is nothing new, but Stephanie White, I'm, I'm just going off the history. I'm not discounting what Stephanie White's capabilities are or anything like that. I am telling you, Stephanie White came in coach the Indiana fever. She left the Indiana fever to go make more money to coach a college job, right? Went over there to coach a college job, was not successful coaching college. This is her history. I don't it has nothing to do with what any conspiracy or thought or anything I'm saying in that arena, right? So you got Stephanie White comes back, right? After not doing well in college and gets the Connecticut job, right? So you go up there and you flat out don't win, right? I mean, you get in the playoffs, you get coach of the year, right? She's been coach of the year in two places, right? So now at the end of the day, the expectation for Caitlin, for really for Stephanie White and Caitlin Clark, no matter what team's on the floor. See, here's the difference. It doesn't matter what team the Indiana Fever have now. In fact, let's just give Stephanie White the same team that the Indiana Fever had last year. And you're telling me she would have won a WNBA championship? That's not possible, folks. You can't go win without a bench. All right? You can't go win benching a player that you've been given 25 to 30 minutes all season. Now you get to the dance and you want to bench him? I mean, come on, guys. Let's, you can't you can't you can't win a playoff game when a when when a, your head coach is crazy. How great the Connecticut Sun are, right? So why don't you just go ahead and interview? Why don't you just take the Connecticut Sun job, right? Because the, the Connecticut really it, it really needs to go that way. Because at the end of the day, you can't be in the playoffs and not win, right? So so my odds of what I'm saying, okay, is Stephanie White has not won, right? So you it's great. She's from the state of Indiana. It's great. She's the greater the Gatorade All American. She's family. Okay, but that that family that you're speaking of, a Stephanie White, that's Indiana's family. That's not the rest of the United States family, right? So at the end of the day, you're gonna have to get players to come in there, and what you got to be cautious of, okay, and what people are bringing up is the treatment of the player, right? So you got a player that's saying, okay, I'm gonna take a 50-50 chance to go out to the Indiana Fever. And these fans may just flip out and turn out on me and treat me like Melissa Smith, right? They're going to treat me like Erica Wheeler, right? You got to think about these things because you still have to have players come play there. All right, that's the important thing. So at the end of the day, I get it. 
Okay, it's not tampering, even if it was. Side still has one or two years left on her contract. The Fever still have to pay that. So she's good, right? I doubt they make her sign a non-compete agreement. I mean, this, this, yeah, that's good. That's a good one. So she can get another head or Cisco job if she wants, right? Right? Because based upon the salary, now I don't, I don't know, I don't know if that's fact, but uh, I know in the NFL, in the NFL, that's how it works, right? So I got to dig deep and say, okay, is that how it works in the WNBA? Because the WNBA is not sitting around here paying like the NFL billions of dollars a year, okay, and fired coaches' salary, okay? The, the NFL literally pays that. So of that five hundred thousand, how much does she keep? What was the what was the terms? I I don't, I don't have it right. So you non compete. So get another head coach. Okay, great. She was a really good assistant coach. Her only issue with head coaching, she wasn't ready to handle the Fever team. Right now, she wasn't ready to handle the Fever team. Now now here's the deal. It 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 have been a whole lot different for Christy Side. Okay, if they didn't draft Caitlin Clark. Right. So you got to ask yourself. Right. Because now you got a hundred, you, you go from the Indiana Fever, and, I, and and that's why I applaud them and their public relations for actually doing a doing an actual media and doing it uh, in the right format and having the stage or the podium correct, right? Because before that, I mean, you got to look at it. the WNBA was operating off picnic tables that we'd have at a barbecue, right? I go in there, I look, I'm like, what are these ladies doing in a picnic table, sitting there all crunched together, trying to have a press conference, right? I mean, you got you got to look at that, so. And you know what? So if she wants a job, yeah, I mean, that's up to her, okay? But at the same time, if, if the Indiana Fever didn't draft Caitlin Clark, Christy Side still have a job, right? So it, it's one player changed all this. So now, so now you're playing, you're doing this all for the growth of one player. And I love Caitlin Clark, but you got to understand that the WNBA players, the NBA players are not fans of other players in the NBA. You, they might like a play. But if you sit down with an NBA player, okay, and you start talking to them about how great another NBA player, they ain't trying to have that conversation, right? Because they got to go compete. And the deal, somebody said the difference between men and women. Yeah, you are. Because Ron Artest and Kobe were about to throw down. And, and Ron was like, Kobe, you don't want to take it there, right? But at the end of the day, everybody thinks, okay, he hates Ron Artest. No, Ron Artest came and played for the Lakers, won a championship. So you talk about toxic players. I'll tell you what. If I can get my hands on Melissa Smith, you know, there's, there's a lot of places you can send her, right? Send her down to Atlanta, right? Send her out down to Atlanta and let her go play basketball because at the end of the day, don't hold her hostage. And for the fans of the NFP, don't don't beat up a player because every time you start beating and talking negative about the player, the other player you're trying to come get in there, they're going, nah, I don't want to do that, right? So that that's that's a that's a, that's a really a slippery slope. Right. So you got you got you got to do that. It made her look incompetent. But I think fans scrutinized so much. Yeah, they just went after. Her. Normally, you don't see that happen for bottom half team. Now, OK, OK, OK. That's that. That's like uh, let me get a like here. OK, so Eric, Eric, you Eric, you are really on the you nailed it. OK, look at this last. It made her look incompetent. But I think fans just scrutinize her so much when normally you don't see that happen for bottom half team. So understand what Eric is saying. Cause Eric's bringing a very valuable point here, right? Indiana Fever have been the bottom of the barrel of the league. The bottom of the barrel of the league. Now you want in one year to be the most prestigious franchise in the league that's not even good enough for the players in the WNBA to come play for, right? So And you fire a coach, right? You, you, you really... You, and I don't know why he fired him. I should have just gave her a quality control job. You can give Christy Sides any job in there, it, but they can't because, I mean, it's a bad deal, whatever the buyout was. But the whole thing is you, you, you're you changing and you want to come marquee, right? Marquee. Wall Street's wants you to become marquee, okay? And everybody wants you to be on national TV and do it just the way you did it a year ago. But you know what? You don't have the players. So you can't do all that without the players. And, 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 and it's not. You, you cannot just run. It's like putting, I put a lot of music on replay, right? Because I like the song, I Believe I Can Fly, Coleman. I mean, it's a great song. But you got to know, you can't just say, okay, go watch Caitlin Clark, go watch Caitlin Clark, and in every arena, eventually there has to be some other players that you have associated, or you got to have championships, right? So Indiana bit at the bottom of the barrel, now they're trying to make a 180-degree turn, right? A 180-degree turn that may end up being a 360 because here's the first thing that's going to come out when you know it's going, they don't have control of it. Uh, we need more time together. Uh, these players haven't played together. 
Uh, this has happened. Now, that shouldn't happen this year. Why? Because the Indiana Fever should come right out the gate. Stephanie White winning ball games, right? Because you got time with your team. You're not drafting a player that's really going to come in there and change the team. You got. You should have all the players. The Indiana Fever should be in the gym working out. That's the way it is. Okay. Cannot compare men's attitude to the W culture. Maybe a bit, but in the W entitlement reigns thick, right? Look for some change. Their CC is a perfect catalyst, right? And, and that's a fact, right? Because in the WNBA, now here's one thing I can respect, and I have the respect uh, for women, right? Because women are really good in business, right? So it's not it's not fair for myself or anyone else to come in and say the WNBA isn't doing it right, right? That's, that's not right for me to say that, right? But when you do look at it objectively, okay, all we're saying is there is a better way of doing it, right? So, and, you know, I mean, because you can't put Caitlin Clark on such a high pedestal that she's above the league, right? You can't have players come to the Indiana Fever and suffocate their career, right? Because if all you're going to do, this, this, is, this is where it's got to get kind of massaged. It's got to get worked out. Because I'm gonna, t- I'm taking you behind the scene to where, I, where you got to talk to the player. Because you got to convince a player, that agent and the player, they got, you got to convince that player to go there, right? But what the players thinking is, well, if I go there, then it's never gonna be about me. No matter what I do, it'll never be good enough, and I'll be judged. Well, Caitlin, the team's bad, and Caitlin's good, right? That's a slippery slope, folks. You, you, you're, you're walking down something really slippery. I want you to think about that for a second. Because players who play in the WNBA are not there to sacrifice their career, right? So, I mean, Caitlin Clark, I mean, she's got to have friends. She's got to have players that she can play with, and that's got to happen. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right, let's look at it. The W entitlement is thick. How about some NBA players that barely play 40 games a year even though they make more than the entire WNBA salary. Yeah, 144 players. Yes, okay. So you're getting into it. Yes, I'm talking about Joel Embiid. And there are others that refuse to play back-to-back games. That's real entitlement. The women are annoying with all their activism. Nonsense. But at least they play all the games. Okay. Eric, yeah, yeah, Eric's right. Eric's right. The NBA, you know, I mean, and, and here's the thing that it can happen with that, Eric, and lack of, I don't want to say experience, but um, it's lack of, mat- it's a maturation process, right? Because this is what the WNBA asked Caitlin Clark to do, right? You asked Caitlin Clark to go out there and play, what is it, 40 games? I think 44 games. And you asked her to play 40 minutes, right? That's unheard of. And on top of it, you asked Caitlin to have the ball in her hand 80% of the time, right? So so think about that, okay? So think about when the team loses, it's not Caitlin's fault, right? When the team wins, it's Caitlin that had to win. I mean, you're building this like Tom Brady, right? Because, I, I mean, you could do that, right? Because the NFL, the way it worked was when Tom Brady lost, well, it was the defense fell, right? It, it was always somebody's fault. But when they won, then it became how great Tom Brady was, right? But Tom Brady took some losses. So, you, you know, you got... You, it's really, yeah, the salary, I don't get that. And that was where it was brought out, brought to my attention. And really what it was, it's just, you know, you got partners that are on both sides of the table, right? And so the WNBA, the way the way Wall Street looked at it was, well, you would be in a better position if you would have took different partners, right? So when you say different partners, you're not dealing with those who are sponsoring the, the NBA or major contributors of the NBA in partnership, right? You would have had some other people come to the table so you got a fair negotiation. It's not a fair negotiation when you're negotiating against yourself, right? Because the players, the, you own 60% of it, so whatever you do, we get 60% of that back. So, I mean, and, and understand what I mean. You got the NBA says, we'll give you a $2.2 million contract, right? That's what you get. Well, all that money's not going to the players. That's going right back to the people who are owners of the WNBA, right? Because they're, they're, they're sharing some of that revenue, right? But at the end of the day, we're going to give you $200 million, and we're going to keep the other, you know, $2 billion, right? So, 
you got to look at that and say, well, that one doesn't work, right? So you got the partners is what holding it up, but the partners you have can take you where no other partner can take you. So that that's there. All right, regardless of whether you mention Kelsey or not, Sky will be heavy competition this season. Yes, they will. They have a new NBA coach who will change their toxic culture. Yes, he will. Beaver needs a big, right? Boston is a marshmallow. I won't go that far because I think Boston got a whole lot of game those people haven't seen because she hadn't been coached into it, right? Okay, compared to Reese and Cordosa. How she was rookie of the year last year is beyond me. Then they'll need to deal with Chennedy, who is faster than Mitchell, like a bull in a china shop. That's a fact. It will be interesting to see who will be on the Fever roster. That's a fact. We don't want you to know who the other new coaches are, but it's going to come down to who has the better coach, starting five and the bench. All right, Jazz. I mean, Jazz, you're nailing it. I mean, you're nailing these things with a coffin there, guys. Let me get your likes in there. I apologize. But you're nailing this thing like a coffin, right? So you you really got to look at it from a whole different perspective. Because, folks, I'll tell you something. Winning a championship and how you go about winning a championship, man, there's only a few people know how to do that. I mean, look at Danny Ainge assembled Boston, but Boston had to go through the process, right? Because you got Jason Tatum, right? This, this is the story between Brown and Tatum, right? So all these years, everybody's telling me, yeah, you know what, uh, Tatum is great, man. Tatum's just, nah, Boston, nah, nah, Tatum's not great. Brown's a better player, right? So if I brought that to you today, what I did back five, six years ago, when I saw the Boston keep losing, I started, Tatum's not the one, right? Tatum. You're listening to the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Show. We're going to keep you up to date and current in all sports. We'll make sure you're aware of everything in corporate and enterprise business. And most of all, we'll share with you how to make a little more money as we cover the NBA, the NFL, and Major League Baseball. You can't do it. So and everybody disagreed, disagreed, and here comes Brown. They win a championship, they're MVP, right? Because Brown plays a different game, right? Brown's more of a scorer. He, he, he's a two-way player. He can take the toughest defensive assignment. He, he can make it work, right? He plays a different game. So you, you can't look at it and say, whoa. Okay, this is how it's going to go. And you can't discount the other players because anybody that comes to the Indiana Fever, they're going to have you play their way, right? So you got to be willing to do that, right? And, and who's willing to do that really is what Kelly's saying. You're going to have veterans willing to do that because you got if you got any up-and-coming players who are actually playing well like a Mitchell, if Mitchell sticks with the Indiana Fever, I'll tell you this. Okay, and I'm not saying that won't happen. I'm just saying if it doesn't really get make it work in the first year, because she's got she's gonna be like, hey, you know what? I've sacrificed my entire career. She came there and played all the losing seasons, right? And 